Hey YouTubers and welcome to Bevan's Builds and today is day three progress on my pole barn build. This is a 30 by 60 pole barn with a 10 foot ceiling. Um, to give a couple quick pieces of information, I want to, because uh, I've actually had quite a few people on my other channel asking me a lot of questions, so I thought I would cover it here. Uh, when you're building a pole barn, one of the first things you want to do is you want to make sure that you're putting in a 6x6 post in each corner. And then as you're going through on the center of it, you're going to put a 4x6 post. Uh, in the first video, I discussed about how when you set that post down, you drill a hole, you know, bore a hole, and then you throw one of these cookies down at the base of it, which is what you then set these posts on top of. What I didn't really get into is the length of the posts. Um, typically, when you're doing a post, any type of post, whether that be for a privacy fence, a pole barn, or anything else, you want one third of that post to be in the ground. Um, so with that being said, what they have here is I believe these were, if I'm not mistaken anyway, I thought these were a 16 foot post, uh, four to five foot of them are in the ground and then they cut a little bit off the top once they got it down to the right dimension. Um, as it's always kind of a give and take, but with a 14 foot post, you want like 4.5 or 4.75 or something like that feet of the post in the ground, which gives you a nice sturdy structure to stand on. And then the difference, because I've had a lot of people asking about foundations and footings and things like that. Um, with a pole barn structure, your foundation is the posts. Um, that is part of the reason why they have to be sunk so deep in the ground. They have to be set in concrete. They have, you know, it's so on and so forth. Um, and I just wanted to get that out and point it out to everybody because I know I've, I've been having a lot of questions about, you know, can this withstand uh, bad weather or so on and so forth. And yes, um, this can withstand high winds. The only thing that you might lose, which, I mean, this is the case with any house or any building, um, would be some of the sheathing or the covering or maybe some of the roofing material. Um, but the structure itself to me is actually just as strong and in some cases even stronger than a traditionally built home Because with a traditionally built home what it is is you're setting down a concrete footer um, That you're building everything on to and with that being said everything is just mounted to the concrete Where with this your structure is actually extending down and into the ground So it gives you a very stable and sturdy structure Something else I want to point out now that we're this far along in the build because they do have the trusses going up already um, <clears throat> When you're doing the header plate As you can see here the outer board for the header they put on the exterior, which is fine um, That is how most builders do it is they put both sides on the exterior of the post But as you can see with what they're doing here because I was worried about structural uh, rigidity they actually notched the 4 by 6 post and put the inside of the uh, header on a shelf, so to speak. Just to give you an example, this is how most builders do do the header boards. As you can see, the inside and the outside board are both just on the outside of that six by six post. And to me, you're gonna get much more rigidity and much more support by notching it and resting that header board on that piece that you notch off. Whereas now we're back out in my current Colt pole barn that is going up and you can see that the outer is on the outside but the inner is notched to be on the inside. Now typically how they do that notch, um, what they do is they, because a 2 by 12 is not a true 2 by 12 inches, a 2 by 12 is actually an inch and a half by 11 and a half. So they notch a groove in uh, 11 and a half by an inch and a half into that 4 by 6 post. And that makes it nice and flush. And then I have some really interesting techniques I'm going to be using um, to be finishing the interior walls of this pole barn. And I will be keeping up and doing that as well uh, with future builds. Uh, but also something else just so you can see. The trusses are all mounted. The trusses are on four foot centers. The wall posts are on eight foot centers. Um, when you're doing a pole barn, you can go up to 10 feet on center. Uh, I believe though at a certain point of length, uh, mine being 30 by 60, uh, that they do require you to go back down to a 8 foot on center. And that's because of the amount of weight that the, the roof has to be able to support during the winter months for snow load. But anyway, now when the contractor comes back, uh, 
should be it'll be Monday anyway um, you should see the rest of the purlins which is the boards that go this way up on the roof as you can already see them over here and the reason that they're doing that is that is how the uh, steel roofing is going to be going on this structure as this entire building is going to have an, a steel exterior uh, something else if I didn't note or post it or mention it on this video already I was very minimal uh, with the amount of windows and doors I'm going to be putting in this. All I'm doing is I'm putting one French double entry door and I'm going to have a window on each side of that door and then on this side of the wall I'm going to have one or two windows on this side of the wall as well. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm building this pole barn for a Lego building and Lego is not UV, uh, UV it is UV sensitive, it's not UV protected. Uh, and with that being said, I wanted to minimize the amount of light that's coming in here to a small amount of windows. Um, but just for future reference, you can put as many windows in this building as you could possibly want. It's just all about your choices. And like I said, for me, for the use of this building, I am going only with four windows. But anyway, I think I've covered everything here. Um, Something else just to point out if I didn't mention it to you, trying to give little tips as far as when you're building it. All the purlins are on two foot centers, even the ceiling, the ones on the roof. Um, and the reason that they're putting them on two foot centers is that's the maximum gap that you want to have when you're doing support for the exterior structure. Uh, anyway though, I believe that's everything. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment below. The next comment I have, because I have one day between when the contractor's coming back, uh, as a matter of fact, you can even see it already over there in the corner. I am doing some of the rough end plumbing and electrical and uh, my next video will be discussing just that the rough and plumbing and electrical so anyway as always thank you for coming to bevan's builds don't forget to like subscribe and share below and we'll see you next time on bevan's builds